Hey. Hey. Hi, everyone. What's up? This is Michelle and Jed uh, with Intentional Travelers. Mm -hmm. And we are doing a little Facebook Live check-in today from our homestay in Hoi An, Vietnam. Nice pronunciation on that. That's pretty good. How yeah. do you know that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it sounded good. Uh, so <laughs> why are we here? Uh, so we're here because we are digital nomads, uh, which means that we live, work, and travel all at the same time. So we're not here on vacation. We actually try to, we're nomadic. So we go from place to place and work and travel. Um, and so one of the places we wanted to come to was Hoi An, because we heard that it was really great for our kind of lifestyle. Um, really awesome place to live. Uh, good internet. Good internet, yeah. Wouldn't you say good internet? Yeah. Um, and then really affordable uh, place to live uh, and work. And uh, today we wanted to give you a glimpse of our place that we're staying at. Um, and then also share uh, what we've been up to a little bit. And then also some of our favorite things that we like to eat here. Um, eat? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I did that. Uh, if, if you are watching the Facebook replay or the replay on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, you can still comment and ask questions, and Facebook will kind of tag it to the time of the video that you're watching so we can yeah. see kind of for reference what you're talking about. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can't do that, but thank you for joining us. But you can <laughs> ask questions there too, and we can get back to it at some point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. so we will start, um, I think let's fill people in a little bit more about our trip. So okay. we've been here two weeks mm -hmm. um, in Vietnam. We started in Hanoi uh, up in the north and visited our friends. And we have a Facebook live chat from that. So you can check that out if you want. Um, mm -hmm. And then we took an overnight train down to Hue um, for the weekend. Uh, and Hoi is a uh, former capital of the country and where the royal family used to live. So it has this cool um, citadel, like walled building or a walled um, part of town um, that we got to bike around. Yeah, I mean, it's really, uh, we spent two days there and I think that was a perfect amount of time to see things in Hoi. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we had to get down to Hoi An and we heard really great things from our friends and fellow Peace Corps volunteers, John and Kate, they've made lots of great recommendations for us, and this was Thank one you, of them. Um, so they introduced us to Fu, who is a motorcycle driver and tour guide, mm -hmm. um, kind of based out of Hoi An, but also actually he grew up closer to Hue, and his family is in this tiny village, which was actually the first stop on our motorcycle tour um, from Hue to here. Yeah, we basically decided it was, we had to get from Hue to Hoi An. And so instead of taking a bus, we thought maybe it'd be fun to go on motorbike uh, since that's kind of like a traditional way of traveling around here. Um, and so found this company from our friends. Yeah, and the first stop was at his family's. And then basically the whole day from eight in the morning to five, well, even later than that, it was probably like six when we got here. Um, we made multiple stops along the way on this really cool highway um, to see lots of different things. So it was really a tour and uh, lots of really exciting things to see. And we kept stopping. We ate, we had lunch with them, which was great. And um, yeah, just a really awesome experience. Yeah. I've never been on a motorbike before, and it's a great way to see this country. It was sure. really cool. And we got lucky, right? It didn't rain. It didn't rain. It was <laughs> predicted to rain all day. <laughs> And I don't think it rained at all. No, and and, uh, and ironically, since we've gotten here... It's rained a lot. Every single, <laughs> every single day it's rained. So yeah. So we just got lucky, like totally lucky. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely worth it. It was a little bit of, of a splurge for us, which if you know me, <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, but yeah, from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., um, they took us around and took care of everything. And how it much was really it, cool. How much was it total? Like, uh, we paid $57 a person. Okay. Right. Right. And, but it includes all the attractions. Lunch, fees. transportation. Yeah. yeah. Like there were some attractions that we went to, uh, coffee breaks, all that stuff that's included. So yeah, it's really good. Okay. What's um, next? 
I think we should show them around our little place. Okay. So this is where we're staying for about 10 days. Um, it is called Leaf Homestay. I'm going to show them around. Yeah. And then can you also check if anyone is writing to Yeah, us? I'll, I'll check that while you give people a tour. So speaking of our um, motorcycle trip, this little tile was hand chiseled. So just a chisel in the guy's hands. <laughs> Pretty amazing that he could do this. Um, and it was the um, brother-in-law of our tour guide in just located in the middle of this tiny little town that grows mushrooms or village, I should say. Um, so yeah, this is our desk with a little hanger there just in case. That's our fruit. Um, comes with a fridge, TV, hi everyone, uh, food in case we get desperate. <laughs> um, this is kind of how we do our drawers since there aren't any like drawers or closets here. So we have our packing cubes um, and basically it separates out our clothes. Um, little house slippers because you don't wear shoes in here. Um, this is the front door and I'll show you the bathroom real quick. Uh, shower. Sink, hair dryer. Hello. Alright. Then we got two beds. <laughs> And this is the little patio outside, so I can do some work. Oh, that's a good way to see this. And they put nice little flowers out there. So it's a little balcony. Um, and then they have planted a bunch of potted plants and irises. Um, so the street is right down there, but you can't really see it because uh, of all the green, so that's kind of nice. And then just past those trees is some rice paddies, fields of rice. So really nice view. Anything else, Jed? Yeah, it's just a really nice room. Um, really comfortable, and it's, it's kind of nice. It's just a really nice place to stay in. Um, yeah, just been really comfortable, so... Um, tell them about the family here. Oh, yeah. So basically, it's, um, yeah, it's an extended family that kind of lives together. Uh, the head of the household is a guy named Mr. T. He's great. Uh, he and his wife, basically, this is their place. And then his sister-in-law, two of his sister-in-laws, I guess, uh, both help out and run this place. And so both his sister-in-laws are the ones that actually cook and clean and, like, maintain the homestay and he and his wife actually work in the city um, but they're just an awesome family they're very intentional about wanting guests to do things with them so all of them are trying to learn English and so they have a lot of opportunities for you to interact with them um, we recently went on a uh, trip to the market and then did a cooking class with them and that was kind of fun um, and then had a great meal with them and just practice uh, English with them but they also taught us some Vietnamese words mostly numbers which Michelle and I still are practicing but um, but yeah just a really great family and really warm and welcoming um, uh, we have access and use to bikes which you'll see in a little bit uh, and then they're just really helpful with everything so just been a really one of the things he said was he's like you're we welcome you you're like family now and I was like whoa that's awesome so yeah he even really gave good. us a Vietnamese language lesson the other day taught us how to count yeah while uh, drinking beers with Jed. <laughs> that was fun. So, yeah. Uh, Thomas and Elizabeth are saying hi. How do you get around? Buses, cabs, or walking? Uh, right now, we've just been using bike every day. Um, it's probably the easiest way. I think we should flip it so that we can both be on it. Yeah. But So we use bikes. Um, they have bikes for us to use every day. And so we are just, yeah, we're taking In... those out and... In um, Hawaii, we also rented bikes for a day for like $1.25 a person. Yeah. Um, 
and walked. And then in Hanoi, um, it's a bit of a bigger city, so we did buses sometimes, which is like 30 cents a person, um, and you can see the routes on Google Maps. So you just put in uh, on the map where you want to go, and it'll show you the different bus routes, so you just have to walk yourself to the bus stop. We also use Lyft in Hanoi. Yeah, um, so the Lyft and Uber app, Lyft partners with a company called Grab locally, but basically it's the same thing, so you can put in your destination and your starting point, um, and then the driver can see that, so you don't even have to translate um, into Vietnamese. Yeah. Um, you don't have to pay any cash, right? So you, yeah, you just, just you have to worry about case. if you're going to get stiffed. It's, yeah, it's through the credit cards and everything, so it's been great. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how we get around. Where are, where are we off to next? So let's go downstairs. I'm going to turn okay. and you can uh, tour. All right. So we are uh, heading outside right now. We're on the second level of the homestay. And I guess I locked the door. Double locked it. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But this is kind of our little hallway, nice area. Uh, do you want to grab the uh, I guess I can grab the door. Yay, live! <laughs> so, yeah, and then we'll head downstairs. These are two guest rooms here, and there's actually another guest room up on the... And a garden floor. balcony with potted plants. Yeah. So this is a stairwell. I don't know if you've seen stairwells before, but this is a stairwell. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Yeah, no problem. Oh, no one's getting sick watching this. I'm doing my best. Yeah. We are on uh, cell data right now, so hopefully it won't cut out. So this is... Bike rentals. Yeah, we're heading into the courtyard area. It's kind of the main entrance. That's where we leave our shoes. <laughs> I love how thorough you are. You're very <laughs> thorough about, like, what you That's a mirror. So how big is this town, and how did you decide to travel there? Um... Oh, well, I think you should answer that question. Okay, well, let's finish uh, the little tour and okay. we'll talk about that. Cool. So this is the entryway to the homestay. Um, our homestay father, head of the household, Mr. T, loves to garden, and he does an amazing job. I mean, there's orchids everywhere and potted plants. Um, and Tyler and Sophia say hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, and then also there's fish. And lots of really cool ponds here, which Michelle will show you here in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So each of these are actually fish ponds. You can see the fish down there. There's a bunch of them. Yep. So there's fish all over, and then this is a fish pond as well. Oh, actually Elle said hi, so my baby niece is saying hi to us right now. Hi Elle. Yeah, so there's fish everywhere and these beautiful orchids everywhere. So it's a really green and lush place. It's really, really nice. That's where we eat breakfast. And they actually spelled out leaf, the name of the homestay up there, in the orchid. Oh, are you sitting down right now? Yeah. I think you should switch it. Oh, and under the table is actually another fish pond. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. So you're going to switch it? I think you should come over here. Okay. Because the sun's this way. Switching! Well, we, uh, as you can see, we practice this quite a bit. Good old live video. There we go. Yeah. So you want to show them our fruit? Yeah, well, first, why don't you answer oh, the yeah. question by Andrew. Andrew wants to know, how did you find this home in any website that we use? Okay, and we didn't answer the one before that, so... You should probably talk really loud, too. We um, decided to travel here because, well, we already know people in Vietnam, so that's a good place to start. Um, so they kind of helped us out when we landed in Hanoi, and then... Um, we just kind of did a little bit of research about other cool towns and Hoi An was definitely high on a lot of people's lists because um, 
It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so it's really charming. Um, there's plenty of places to eat and all different variety of food. Uh, still affordable, although, you know, there's more tourists here, so the prices are maybe a little bit higher, but um, easy to get around. Uh, what site do you use normally to find these kind of places or like rankings? So one place I check is called Nomad List, which ranks um, cities based on things that digital nomads will care about. So the uh, internet speed, pollution, cost of living, those kind of things. Um, also Travel Fish for Southeast Asia is a good site to kind of see, you know, things to do. Um, and then how did we find this home? I use Airbnb. And I'm really thorough about checking the reviews. So this one, even though it's only been open for a year, <laughs> thank you, uh, had a lot of good reviews and people specifically talk about, um, you know, how friendly the family was and that you can do a lot of interactive stuff. Um, they list on their Airbnb, like, we'll take you for free to the, our little carpentry village. Um, which is where the family kind of originated and um, other family members of theirs still live and work um, and do wood carving. So we're going to do that this weekend. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's how I found it. Yeah, you just use, you're really good about looking at reviews and finding out like what people said about it. And also, I mean, you filter a lot too because, you know, we, we think about things like price and location. Like one of the things we don't like is being in the center of a really touristy area. Um, we like kind of being on the outskirts of it, uh, mostly because we want a more authentic experience as much as possible to be with a family and listen to like cars and things that go by. Um, because that's really what it's about. Like for us, it's about getting to know a place, a town, a city as best possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's not too touristy. Um, the other thing I usually do also is message the host before I book. Mm -hmm. um, and even if it's not an important question, like usually I'll ask them about how fast their internet is or something, um, or something that they haven't um, clarified on their listing. But it doesn't really matter what the question is. The point is kind so of true. to see how quickly they respond and if they respond or not. Um, They're professional about their response. So yeah. it gives you a sense of what communication will be like as you're arriving. Cause you're counting on them to kind of be able to find the place when you show up and all those things. Yeah, I'd say every place that we've been to through Airbnb, if the host has been a really good at communicating with us, then we can tell it's going to be a, a better experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, Andrew, the website, I think, is Nomad List um, for the ranking of the cities and then Airbnb for finding the home. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Should we show them our fruit? Yeah, so one of the things that I love about uh, Vietnam is the food. Um, so fresh, really good, really affordable. And uh, we just wanted to share, I guess, some of our favorite things that we find at the market. Um, some things you can get at home, like so for example, it's gonna, it might sound really loud, but this is one of Michelle's favorite fruit. Uh, and it's actually really pretty to look at too. Um, you might know what it is. This is called mangosteen. And it's a, it's a really, I don't know how to describe it, right? It's like hard, it feel, it kind of looks like an eggplant. Um, it took me a really hard time to actually open this, which was kind of frustrating the other day. But inside are these like white, tiny white, I don't know. What Fleshy, I mean, do you want to try to open it? <laughs> no. We had trouble last time. Uh, uh, well, these this one feels pretty hard. soft. So I think you're supposed to take off the top okay. and then push down on the top to kind of loosen it up. All right, we're trying this live. So. Vaughn, I saw your message uh, on WhatsApp. So they are watching, but they're not able to post on Facebook. Um, oh, I did it. <gasps> Whoa. Yes. So he asked about Oops. the food, which we're talking about now. So check it out, guys. Oh, geez. This is not great. This looks like I'm like killing it, yeah, it something. It kind of gets red all over. <laughs> but if you notice inside this white flesh, that's the actual part you can eat. And it's really tasty. Um, yeah, sweet. How do you describe it? Yeah, just sweet? I mean, the closest texture is probably like a peach. Um, oh, peach. Because it really it breaks down so easily on your tongue. Yeah. Um, and then the other one that we have never had before, 
And I'm obsessed with these. Like, it's obsessed. called bong bong. Bong bong? Something like bong that. Bong bong? I don't know if it's bong bong or bong bong. Chow's going to correct us. <laughs> Chow, please tell us what this is like, and tell us how to spell it. But it looks like grapes. Like dirty, hard grapes. I mean, that's the best way to describe it, you know? Like yeah. it looks like grapes. And what you do is you take a, one of them. And I'll be honest, when I first had this recently, I was thinking, I don't know if you felt the same way. I was like, this is going to be, I don't know. It also kind of looks like a fig from the top. Yeah. And you kind of... I had low expectations for The texture for on the outside is like a fig. But all you do is you basically peel the outside. And then you get this beautiful white flesh that kind of reminds me of uh, lychee or um, rambutan. Uh, but you have this really beautiful flesh inside. That sounds weird. Really beautiful <laughs> flesh inside. <laughs> but if you see... I don't know if you can see that well. It's like... It's little. It's sectioned. Yeah. The the inside is all fruit though, with with some seeds. But the seeds you can bite, and the smaller the seeds are, then they're okay. But the bigger they are, they get really bitter. Like it's really strange. Like the the fruit is really sweet, but the it's seed is really bitter. It's actually better to just swallow the seed so you don't get the bitterness. Yeah, and it's small. I mean, the seeds are small. But this is my favorite fruit. Like if you were in Southeast Asia, and you see these bad boys, <laughs> like get them <laughs> okay like I'm, I'm obsessed with these like really um we had some other food questions from a previous chat if you want to just scroll down scroll down um from tara which american foods are available and which are not i eat Meats and cheeses, don't eat seafood or carbs, and might be spending a week in Vietnam at the end of this month trying to figure out how hard it will be to stick to my dietary restrictions. Um, and then in the last chat, Torea was asking us about um, eating gluten-free. Gluten -free. Yeah. So what's available here? Well, American food-wise, I, I feel like there's burgers and pizza everywhere. French yeah, fries. Yeah, pretty much, uh, I mean, we ate... Excluding the small villages that you're probably not going to, um, the cities all have different options. Italian, pizza, um, well, obviously those aren't gluten-free, but um, no, you but can find American, Western food, Japanese food, Chinese food, maybe. Um, I but, mean, there was sushi. There was sushi in Hanoi. Yeah. So... But... Um, I guess it isn't too surprising. When you're in Vietnamese restaurants... Because, especially in the tourist areas, so a lot of the places we went to in Hanoi, um, Hue, and Hoi An, you can find restaurants that have picture menus um, or English menus or both. Um, so you at least know what you're getting into a little bit more. <sighs> kind of. Um, so you can order dishes that are vegetarian. Um, you let's see morning glory is like greens. spinach or collard greens um which is really good but you're but the thing terry you were asking about was like carbs right and so uh, there's a lot of rice here there's a lot of rice noodles a lot of things are wrapped in rice paper um so you might want to figure out a way that you can say like no rice and maybe they can just like get you meat or like a salad but there definitely is a lot of vegetarian options for sure and you can probably say like no rice or if you're comfortable um, eating around noodles or... Yeah. And for yeah. people who are gluten-free, um, same thing. I mean, there's bread, but you don't have to eat uh, necessarily the bread. Yeah, you know? I do think it would be easy to avoid gluten here. Um, yeah. And as far as we can tell, there's not, like, hidden gluten in the sauces or those kind of things. Um, yeah. So Robin had a question about do we take precautions with uh, stomach problems with street food and stuff. Um... I would say the only thing that we've done kind of precautionary is, is make sure that the water we get is bottled. Uh, and that's something that the Vietnamese say as well. Um, one of the things about, I've realized with, it, with I don't know, food-wise, I mean, we wash our hands with wipes. Um, so those kind of basic things. But, I mean, knock on wood, we haven't ever gotten sick from places. You know, I mean, a lot of these places, they really care about, I think they actually care about sanitary conditions. Because, yeah. you know, their livelihood is based on their food. And so if people are getting sick from it, you know, obviously that's not a good thing. So, um, yeah, we have 
not avoided eating any particular thing, vegetable, fruit, whatever. We've yeah. eaten it all. Um, I would say, like, the first week I noticed a difference in my bowel movements, <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't, like, bad, and we never have gotten sick here. Um, <laughs> total, we've been here, ma- like, three That's and awesome. a half weeks, counting last year, so um, haven't gotten sick. Um, the students that we went on a little walking tour with in Hawaii, we asked them about water, and they said um, they use the tap to brush their teeth, to wash their fruit and vegetables, um, but for, like, I don't know if they really drink that much water, but, like, tea and stuff, it's boiled, so, um, yeah, yeah, so we haven't had too many problems. Um, I do think about it, though, and... We did notice, uh, we got to shadow the, sh- the kitchen cook um, in Hanoi for the office that we were staying at, and she washed the greens like four times, so put them into different bowls of water, shook them off, and we have a video of this to share later, but um, yeah, so the kind of like spinach type greens, she washed four times, but in the tap water. And I think they do that because they want to make sure that... Uh, like, there's no pesticides or certain things that are used. And we've heard yeah. rumors about that in Asia in general, that people do that. Um, so your dad asked if... Are you finding the food spicy? Yeah. Well, uh, certain things. Uh, a lot of the food is not spicy, which has been great. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, fish sauce, which you... C- usually comes on the side and you like dip your spring rolls in it's like a condiment that's spicy but it hasn't been too bad for us yeah i wouldn't i would say that like there have only been a couple times on this whole trip where i've been like way this is way too spicy or really hot but most of the time it was it's been really good Hi Heath. very very flavorful hey Heath, (laughs) what's up man um but yeah i wouldn't say that it's overly spicy one of the things too that i've noticed is that Um, different things have happened when I eat spicy food here, which I've never, I don't have in the States. I don't know why, but my tongue gets numb. Yeah. Um, your tongue gets numb too? Uh, not totally numb. I'd say the spice I feel mostly in my tongue and then, you know, up here. Well, and here's the other thing too, right? Like it's already hot and sweaty here. So I, I, I guess the other thing about eating spicy food here is that because you're already hot and sweaty, it doesn't make you more hot and sweaty. You know, like if we're in the States, I don't feel like I'm, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I want to do a quick check-in for people who are just joining us right now. Oh, yeah. Um, so, we're Jed and Michelle, intentional travelers. We're right on the main road, Feel as free you can tell. to leave a comment in the Facebook Live chat, or if you're watching the replay, you can still do that. If you're watching YouTube, uh, we will post the replay there, but... We are currently in Hoi An, Vietnam, at our homestay. Um, we're talking about food and... You could probably hear that and talking about just our experience here in Vietnam so far. Um, but thanks for being here and make sure that you uh, leave us a comment or let us know you're here. Uh, and, uh, yeah. If you're on Facebook, please also like the video so that we can see that you watched it. Um, you know, I think uh, I saw something. Uh, There's some questions. Yeah, so okay. I'll pull that up. But why don't, you, check your questions. why don't you see if there's anything else we're missing right now? No, we talked about public transit. I want to give you a quick um, look at the compound. What? So this is why you're hearing so many motorcycles. This is our street. And right out there is the rice paddies on the other side of those trees. Um, And then down that way is kind of more into town. We're about a five minute bike ride into the ancient uh, UNESCO World Heritage part of town. Um, How much longer will we be there? We are in this uh, homestay for 10 days total and I think we have six more days. Um, So up next we are going to Da Nang which is not too far away. 
um, and that's where the nearest airport is. So we'll be flying from Da Nang, uh, stay in an Airbnb for two or three nights, I think three nights, and um, then go to Bangkok. So thorough. So thorough. Yeah. We gotta be accurate here, okay? Yeah. Hi, Aaron, by the way. And um, yeah, so some questions. Wow, it's kind of louder. I feel Should we go like. back up? No, nah, well, let's just stay here because we're not going to be on for very much longer. So, uh, some questions here. Uh, what is our favorite dish? Your brother wants to know what is our favorite dish to eat so far. What's your favorite dish? Hmm. I like a lot of the noodle dishes. Um, the bun cha that we had in Hanoi was really good. It's um, like white rice vermicelli noodles, uh, like a fish sauce broth with pork meatballs, greens that you can put in there. I love when you describe food. Yes. Why? No, I just like, I, I'm hungry now. Um, yeah. I think my favorite meal was in Hue when our student friends ordered us a dish is called Nem Lui. Um, we, oh, thanks for letting us know about the background noise because we just assume it's, it's here, really loud. So. Phone's facing us, so maybe it's not reaching. Um, but Nem Lui, which is like a really great, I don't even know how to describe that one. It's like salad that you wrap up and then you eat. It's like pork sausage on sticks yeah. that you put in a wrap with salad. And then salad. the omelet, so Bun Seal, which is... Am I saying that? Yeah, bun seal, which is a, like an egg omelet crepe, which is so good. With pork in it. Yeah, so like those are some of our favorite things. Um, How wow, more questions coming. How do we communicate when we're about town? How much are we using our translation app? Isn't it working okay? Um, around town. A lot of basic English and sign language, like yeah. a lot of charades, like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would say restaurant owners um, know kind of really basic English, uh, you know, like the numbers and... But things get lost yeah. in translation, though. Yeah, when when we want to, like, really make sure that we're getting exactly what we want to eat <laughs> from the menu and understanding, like, the price before we order it... Um, that, you know, like, we kind of go over it for a long time. We do take out the um, Google Translate app from time to time. It's not super reliable. Like, well, I feel like it kind of gives people the gist of what we're saying. Yeah. But it's rarely, like, a coherent sentence. <laughs> also, when they respond to you, like, if you try to have Google uh, translate what they're saying, you know, most people don't, like... They're not necessarily familiar with the concept of, like, talking into the phone. Exactly. So they're not saying the exact sentence that we need to understand. So they might be like, well, I think it could be... They might be saying those things. And so Google's not translating that, and it kind of gets into a mess. But, oh, well. Yeah. But still, it hasn't been too bad. Um, we were definitely intimidating, intimidated before we came. <laughs> we were intimidated. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it's been fine, especially, you know, having a homestay that they're working on their English. They, they know this place really well, so we can always figure stuff out before we kind of go out and about. I would, I would say like, any, like anywhere you travel, it's nice to know the words for like, please, thank you, um, sorry, excuse me, where's the bathroom? Uh, one of my favorite things to ask these days is, uh, can I take your picture? Which is basically, well, I'm gonna butcher it, but I'm Just gonna say, picture. Chupain. Chupain. Chupain, something like that. And then, like, I show the camera and then I smile and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So, but the funny thing though is that everybody, I'm, I mean, like, if I could get a, a, I don't know, if I could get money for every time somebody asks if, if I speak Vietnamese or if they try to talk to me first, right? It's like, I'm so sorry. So many people are like, oh, I thought you were Vietnamese. I feel like I'm disappointing a lot of Vietnamese people here. <laughs> like, and like Michelle and I laugh because we probably they probably think I'm her tour guide, you know. And I want to be like, we're together. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Um, so Marianne asked, did we get any specific vaccines before our trip? That's a good question. We did not. Maybe we should have. No, um, we were pretty vaccined up four years ago for Peace Corps. Um, <laughs> vaccined up. Well, I like that. 
We did get a lot of vaccines. You know, so. we made sure yeah. that our, the basic stuff was up to date. Some things that, um, because we will be in developing countries for over the next four or five months, um, if we have an opportunity, I would consider getting, um, what, typhoid? typhoid? That's like a foodborne one. Um, in Southeast Asia, they're like sometimes Japanese encephalitis. I was like, Michelle, I don't know what that is that is, bad? She's I like, guess it's here. She's like, yeah, that's bad. You can die. And I was like, what? Um, but there's, you know, the, the CDC has to kind of, for liability reasons, tell you these things. But really, like, there's not big outbreaks of any of these things. And if there were, we would know. Um, also, it's more of a concern when you're kind of out in the jungle or more rural areas. So... Yeah. Um, in the cities, it's not as big of an issue. I still worry about it, but you don't seem worried about it, so, yeah. Can we show what an actual rice paddy looks like? Rice plant. Plant? Plant? Oh, plant. Well... Yeah, we will show that in our pictures or videos from our motorcycle tour. Yeah, we'll try our best to, well, and see if we can get, like, a close-up of it for you. Yeah. And then, are there rivers or lakes close by? So, Hoi An is really yes. interesting because... It's on the sea, but there's a big river that runs into the sea, and then there's little islands. So there's, it basically, and there's rice paddies everywhere. So to be honest with you, we kind of feel like we're surrounded by water all the time. And then it's a, it's a little bit similar to the Netherlands, where like a lot of mm, uh, the land is uh, below sea level or at sea level, and so there's um, canals and you know standing water in the rice paddies. Um, but yeah, we're just slightly removed from the beach. So we, we biked to the beach the other morning. It was like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of Vietnamese people go there to exercise in the morning, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, yeah, there's a river like just down five the road. blocks that way, probably. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Jeff. Let us know if you have any other questions. We will probably wrap up soon. Yeah. So once again, Jed... Michelle of Intentional Travelers. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you rewatch this or watch or watching it for the first time, um, there's lots of uh, <laughs> there's lots of ways you can participate still by asking questions. Michelle and I will go back and answer anything that we missed. Um, if there's anything you'd like to know or want to see in the future while we're here, um, you know, let us know and we can try to find those things. Yeah, we'll try um, to include that in our next uh, blog post or Facebook Live. Yeah, I mean, um, we'll be in Vietnam for another week, and uh, we have some things planned in this coming week, which is kind of cool. But then we head off to Thailand for a conference called 7 and 7. Hi to our friends who are putting on that conference. It's for digital nomads um, like us. And so, yeah, so we're going to that, and the idea is that there's going to be seven conferences on seven different continents in seven years. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, new questions. Have we seen any ancient ruins? Um, ancient ruins. We, I mean, in Hanoi, there are definitely some old temples that are at least a century year old. Mm -hmm. um, our, actually, our host, homestay host here, um, so Saturday, they try to take most of their guests to this wood carving village but when we were eating dinner with them the other day he also had the idea like he wants to take us to my song which is um like an ancient, ancient city. yeah ruins <laughs> yeah um so maybe like half an hour away from where we are um so i think they're gonna take us on their motorbikes out there yeah that we're excited for that experience because we have no idea really what to expect you know, and so that's that's this weekend. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and then your brother wants to know if we hiked the Marble Mountains. So it's funny you asked that question because we didn't know that we were going to be visiting this place. And on our tour on the motorcycle, um, they stopped. Like one of the last stops um, was basically to the White Marble Mountain, which is a real. If you get a chance to see this place, it's really incredible. Because at first I thought we were just looking at like a pagoda or something. But it's like this awesome hike 
where there's lots of different viewpoints. There's caves, there's really ancient carvings. Temples, um, shrines. Yeah, and some of the caves were the coolest thing, caves I've ever seen in my life. Like, really tall with openings at the top and light coming through. Lanterns. Um, and then you can go to a point at the end of the hike, which looks at the other marble mountains. Um, so there was about five of them total within this area. Um, just a really, really beautiful, interesting place. Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't really expecting that stop. Like, I thought we were ending up in Hoi An already. Yeah, I thought um, we were done. So... Uh, that might have been part of the why I was so impressed, but it was just really cool. Uh, I wish we had more time there, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess we didn't know we were going to do that, but uh, yeah, thumbs up again for that motorcycle tour. And uh, if you ever are in Vietnam and uh, want to get connected to them, let us know because it really was a great experience. And I, I would like to do a longer trip next time if my butt allows it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it was sore at the end of the day, but... Um, Anything else? I don't know. All right. If you're just joining, um, we gave a little tour of our homestay and bedroom at the beginning, so feel free to watch that again. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, you can always leave comments after the fact, and we'll get to them. We'll either respond to you via text in the comments, or we'll use uh, your question in our next update. Yeah, but thanks for watching. Uh, we look forward to doing this again, and um, yeah. We'll catch you later. Bye, everybody. See you later.